Oh, you daughter of Zion. Say hallelujah. Uh, he says, you know what? Uh, sit in your dignified place. From now on, walk in a different way. Amen. When you wake up every day, declare it's a day of dignity. It's a day of glory. Say hallelujah. Yes, that's what you are. That's what God has made you. Praise the Lord. The redeemed of the Lord shall return and come back to Zion. Say hallelujah. Sorrow and mourning shall, shall be left behind and a new joy shall come over their lives. God bless you as we take our seats tonight. Come on, give our worship team a big hand clap. You know, from Monday, they've been with us, and they've served uh, this house with all energy. All the worship leaders have done well. Give them a big hand clap. Amen. But it's good again for us on our sixth day to be together uh, as we travel this journey that will dictate the pace, that will set the pace for the year 2022. And let me tell you, it's going to be a good year. Say hallelujah. Come on, God says, these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. They shall come upon your life and overtake you. Says, I will set you on high above all the nations because you sought the Lord on an altar. Uh, come on, are you ready for today? Look at your neighbor, just say to them, say, possess your Hebron. That's right, possess your Hebron. We also want to welcome our online church congregation. Some of them are really amazing in their uh, encouragements and their participation. Right from the beginning of the service to the end, you see them uh, declaring and writing all the key points that the bishop will be teaching and preaching, praying their own prayers right there. And I know God is faithful to them wherever they are. Say hallelujah. So please make sure that you are in person, you are louder than those who are online. Say amen. Uh, sometimes we get in as much as 300 comments. Say amen. They are amens online. They are not lazy. <laughs> they know it matters in the spirit arena. Again, say possess your Hebron. Okay, we are going to go to three scriptures to, tonight. Uh, the book of Joshua chapter number 14 uh, the book of Isaiah 52 and Ephesians chapter number 1. So as we find the book of Joshua, uh, say the word of God is alive. It is active in my life here this evening. The Lord gives wisdom. Out of his mouth proceeds knowledge and understanding. And I receive it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, the book of Joshua, chapter number 14, uh, we are reading from verse number 6. Uh, you know the story, basically, let me, if I can give you just the background to it, uh, so that we can all catch up. Uh, they crossed the Jordan, uh, and Mo Joshua told them, hey, uh, make sure your eyes are on the, on the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and their priest, uh, because that is the key thing. Our journey throughout this year will involve focusing on God. Say hallelujah. Uh, focusing on the presence of God. And tonight, some of my teaching as well will be very crucial on that direction uh, as we uh, get to up our level and our dimension of walking with the person of the Holy Spirit. Uh, but you know, after that, uh, they, they crossed over for well, well, uh, God showing their signs and wonders and parting the Jordan. They immediately come to uh, Jericho and, uh, and Joshua goes before the altars of the Lord. And you'll find time and time again throughout the book of Joshua, he goes to, before God. Before any battle, he goes before God. And the only time he did not go before God was when a group of uh, people who were mischievous called the Gibeonites came to him. Came to him with some rotten bread and uh, some stale water and said, you know, Joshua, we are from very far. 
So we want you to make peace with us. See, God had told them, destroy every nation around. And this time he didn't ask God. God didn't do a covenant with the people that were very near. Deceptive. But after that, he knew I have to ask God. But he prayed and he made the commander-in-chief. Hallelujah. The ancient of days. Say hallelujah. The alpha, the omega. Every child of God must have a relationship with the ancient of days. Time and time again, he is, he is the one who was and is and is to come. He's not history. He's not history. He's present. And he must speak to you and he must reveal himself to you and show his mighty power in your life. And of course, he was given the strategy how to take Jericho. And we saw how the walls of Jericho came down. Come on, the walls of Jericho must come down. Say hallelujah. They've already come down. They are coming down. And anywhere where you meet them, declare walls of Jericho come down. Now, don't be intimidated by walls. In the journey of a child of God, barriers will come. But they come to be defeated. Say hallelujah. Facing a challenge, facing a problem, is, does not mean God is not in it or God is not on your side. That's what faith is all about. James says, count it all joy, my brethren. Uh, when you face all kinds uh, of trials and temptations. Uh, ah, but you know what? Uh, God will give you the victory. And so we saw that. Uh, uh, the walls of Jericho came down. They went every man, uh, possessed this possession. But also God told them an instruction. You remember, Jericho was the first of 31 cities. Come on, say the first. And God told uh, Israel, when you take Jericho, Jericho does not belong to you. It is devoted to what? Come on, it's devoted to what? To the Lord. And of course, there was a young man called Achan who thought, wait a minute. This is just little. I can take this. Nobody will ever know. He took the silver, the garment. He took the gold. He did. Nobody knew it. And until they were to attack A. A was a small town. No big deal. But when they were attacking A, they were defeated. Disobedience leads to defeat. Can I repeat that? Disobedience leads to defeat. Obedience leads to blessing. Never forget that. Never justify disobedience. Not on any platform. So, uh, they were defeated. Joshua came. I uh, was kneeling before God, lying prostrate. God said, stand up. What are you doing? They seen in the camp. But here's something that is an intriguing thing. It was one man who sinned. And the whole tribe was punished. Hello? Lamentations 5 7 said, Our fathers sinned and they are no more. But we, the children, are bearing their iniquity. The reason the bishop will shout, uh, the reason the bishop will look for you and tell you, get it right. When you do things wrong, we all feel it. Hello? We are responsible for one another. Matters. Shout and say hallelujah. And so we, we saw that, uh, but also we've seen how through Christ Jesus uh, there is redemption. Uh, come on, we are redeemed from every curse. We are redeemed from uh, every, every attack of the enemy. But today we are getting into another very exciting phase. Shout and say hallelujah. Uh, just before they crossed the Jordan, two and a half tribes said, Ah, Jesus, we are okay. You guys can go to the promised land. We, we are okay this side. Don't even take us there. But Moses told them, no, we can give you the land, yes. But you have to fight with your brethren. Say hallelujah. You know what some of the brethren say? Ah, me, I'm blessed. I've got my house. I've got my car. I don't need the fast. 
come on, go with your brethren. I mean, I've got my job, I've got my husband, I've got my wife. We have a big bed, we don't need to pray. Come on, rise up and cross the Jordan. You are never called to be alone in the kingdom of God. We are family. We are a body. We are one people. Say hallelujah. And so, you know, they crossed over. And when they crossed over, and they fought and uh, they were taking the land. And, but suddenly Joshua said, listen, I'm getting old. We have defeated these kings, but there's still much land to be possessed. And uh, that is what brings us to chapter number 14. You know, and uh, the tribe of Judah is being given land by, uh, by Joshua Beautiful, big land. But then something begins to happen there that is totally amazing. Verse number 6, where we read the word of God. Please, if you are with me, wherever you are, Joshua 14, verse number 6. Then the children of Judah came to Joshua in Gilgal. Gilgal was the headquarters of this campaign. And the Kenizzite, uh, sorry, and Caleb, the son of Japune, the Kenizzite said to him, You know the word which the Lord said to Moses, the man of God, concerning you and me in Kadesh Barnea. You know the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, 40 years later, Moses is not even on the scene. He still calls him the man of God. I know these days some of you are afraid of calling a man a man of God. It's easier to call him a pastor than to call him a man of God. Wow. Can I hear an amen? <laughs> uh, he says, you know the word of the Lord which... Uh, which Moses, uh, the man of God, said to me concerning you and me in Kadesh Barnea. I was 40 years old. Do I have any 40 year olds here? Can I see their hands if you're 40 years old? I don't know what they look like anymore. Raise your hand if you're 40 years or older or, or younger than that. Or 30 to 40 anyway, you're in the same category. No, no difference. Okay, yeah, there are a few of them. They are refusing to show themselves. Come on, don't go beyond the foot without a word from the Lord. <laughs> Some are 60, they don't have a word from God. I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land, brought back word to him as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren who went with me made the heart of the people melt. But I wholly followed the Lord my God. So Moses swore on that day saying, Surely the land where your foot is trodden shall be your inheritance and your children's forever because you have wholly followed the Lord my God. And now behold, the Lord has kept me alive. As he said, these 45 years ever since the Lord spoke the word to Moses while Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now here I am this day, 85 years old. Come on, I bless you. When you're 85, we, we should be able to say, I was 40 years when we did that seven-day fast in January. Say hallelujah. Come on, be around uh, when you're 85 years. As yet, I am as strong this day. Come on, put on your strength. Say, I'm as strong this day. That's right. Let the anointing of strength be upon your life. I am strong this day as on the day that Moses sent me, uh, just as my strength was, so is my strength for war, both for going out and for coming in. Now therefore give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke on that day. For you heard in that day how the Anakim were there, that the cities were great and fortified. It may be that the Lord will be with me and I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord has said. And Joshua blessed him. Hallelujah. 
He blessed him uh, and he gave Hebron to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, as an inheritance. Hebron therefore became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite to this day because he wholly followed the Lord God. And the name of Hebron formerly was Kijath Abba. Abba was the greatest man among the Anakim. Then the land addressed from war. I'll come back to it, but I want to give you a little powerful understanding of that scripture. See, when Caleb went with the 12 spies to spy the land, uh, and they went around, when he came to Hebron, everyone said Hebron. Do you know what he saw? When he came to Hebron, he saw the graves of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Rebekah and Leah. The only piece of real estate that Abraham had bought. And he owned it. But when he came to Hebron, it was no longer being owned by the children of God. Come on, the heathens were on it. Are you with me? And uh, they were desecrating those graves. They were abusing them. And he remembered. This is the place where God met with our father Abraham. This is the place where promises were given. This is the place where the glory of God came down. Something in him began to get fired up. He said, come on devil, you can't keep on taking what belongs to us. You see... This is the difference between uh, 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 Caleb and other people. Others simply saw uh, a piece of land uh, all over, full of mountains. Uh, but for Caleb, uh -uh, he, he had a different spirit. If you read the story of Caleb, come on, are you with me, church? Uh, that which we read there today, nine times in his in his conversation with, uh, with Joshua, he will say, the Lord said, the Lord said, the Lord, nine times. If I sit with some of you for 10 minutes, you'll be telling me, and Bishop, there was a problem, and then Bishop, there was a mountain, and then Bishop, there was a sickness, and then Bishop, there was a lake. You never hear the Lord. Manago church. What you magnify is what grows in your life. <laughs> Come on, are you with me? Caleb was different. When they say the different spirit, you can see it. He kept on saying, the Lord said, and the Lord said, and uh, you know, and God said, and, uh, and the word of the Lord came to me. All the time, he focused on God. Didn't focus on the problems. Say hallelujah. By the way, everyone has problems in life. But not everyone sees problems the same way. Some people are overcome by problems. Others overcome problems. Some people are left bitter by problems. Some people are left better after facing problems. Stronger. Some people face their challenges with fear. They are 22 with the fear. Some people face their challenges with faith. Say hallelujah. Please, learn to turn a deaf ear to Doubters. And those would keep on telling, it can't be done. You want to start a business? Ah, in this environment, you can't win in business. It's a lie of the devil. Don't listen to pessimist. Say hallelujah. When the pessimist is talking, close your ear. Ah, shaka homa. It's no praise. Ah, there's no money. Because they will infect you with their sickness. Caleb ignored 10 people who were fear mongers. 
He believed the word of God anyway. Oh, by the way, everyone has a right to say what they want to say. But also you have a right to ignore them. <laughs> Are you listening? One statement I learned many time ago. I'll never allow anyone to walk through my mind with their dirty feet. No. No, I don't. Say hallelujah. I make like expunge things that don't line up with the word of God from my mind. Shout and say hallelujah. It's important. There are people who prefer the wilderness. They don't want the promised land. They will tell you. Are you listening to me? That there are no more miracles. They will tell you there are no more healings. That is their portion. They prefer their disease. But not for you, child of God. Come on. It's important. Say hallelujah. Don't let anyone ever pull you down. Tell you, don't pray. Don't fast. Don't serve God. Ah, uh ah. -uh, that's not your portion. It's their portion. Caleb filled his mind with faith. He was attracted to Hebron. Hebron was a mountain. Hebron had giants. But he says, I'm strong today as it was on that day. Say hallelujah. Ah, uh, for him, he knew, you know what, give me Hebron. And today I'm going to challenge you to take Hebron for your life. Say hallelujah. Okay, we haven't finished reading the word of God. Let's go to the book of Isaiah 52, lest I, I sabotage myself. Isaiah 52, then we'll go to the book of uh, uh, um, Ephesians chapter number 1. And then we'll get on our journey for our message today, even though you already have a, a quarter of it already. Okay, Isaiah 52, here we go. Say hallelujah. Uh, please, as we go through this year, take this word every day. Declare yourself, wake up, wake up. You're speaking to your spirit to be alive. There must be no disconnect. Between uh, your spirit being alive uh, and the presence of God and the anointing of God. This year, let there be a belief in a place where you are continually stirred up. What did Paul tell Timothy? Fan the gift of God into flames. Be fired up for the right things. Awake, awake, put on your strength, O Zion. Put on your beautiful garments. O Jerusalem, the holy city, for the uncircumcised and the unclean shall no longer come to you. Shake yourself from the dust. Arise. Come on, someone say arise. That's right. Arise uh, and sit in a dignified place. Sit down, O Jerusalem. Lose yourself from the bones of your neck, O captive daughter of Zion. For thus says the Lord, you have sold yourself for nothing and it shall be redeemed without money. For thus says the Lord, my people went down at first into Egypt to dwell there. Then the Assyrian oppressed them without cause. Now therefore, whatever here, that my people are taken away for nothing. Those who rule over them, make them wail, says the Lord. And my name is blasphemed continually every day. Therefore, my people shall know my name. They shall know in that day that I am he who speaks. Say hallelujah. Come on, they shall know I am he who speaks. As you have walked with God this week, uh, coming into his presence, he says you shall know that every word was not in vain. It is him who speaks into your life. I am he who speaks. Uh, behold, it is I. Verse 7, how beautiful upon the mountains at the feet of him who brings good news. Come on, we said we are putting our feet on some mountains. We are bringing good news to the mountain of the Lord. Who proclaims peace, who brings good glad tidings of good things, who proclaims salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. And your watchmen shall lift up their voices. With their voices they shall sing together, for they shall see eye to eye when the Lord 
brings uh, back Zion. Break forth into joy. Sing together. You west place of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. And the Lord has made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations and all the ends of the earth shall see that salvation of our God. Let's go to the book of Ephesians, uh, chapter number 1. Uh, Ephesians chapter number one, and I'm going to read now from the Amplified Version. I think it makes, makes it more clearer from verse number three uh, to verse number 14. Hallelujah. He says, may the blessing and uh, be to God and the Father of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ, the Messiah, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual Blessing in the heavenly places in brackets given by the Holy Spirit. Come on, say we are blessed with every blessing given by the Holy Spirit. Right, verse number four. Even in his love, he chose us, actually picked us out for himself as his own. You are picked out by God as his own in Christ before the foundation of the world that we should be holy, consecrated, and set apart for him. And blameless in his sight, even above reproach, before him in love. For he foreordained us, which means destined us, planned in love for us to be adopted as his own children through Jesus Christ in accordance with the purpose of his will because it pleased him. So that we might be to the praise and commendation of his glorious grace, his favor and mercy, which is so freely bestowed on us in the beloved. You have favor and you have the mercy of God, by the way. Verse 7, in whom we have redemption, which is deliverance and salvation. Through his blood, the remission, the forgiveness of our shortcomings and our trespasses in accordance with the riches and the generosity of his gracious favor. Come on, I love verse 7 a lot. See, in him we have what? Deliverance and salvation. When you hear that word redemption, come on, say deliverance and salvation. And then he says, through his blood, we have the forgiveness of our offenses. Whatever offenses you committed, there is the forgiveness of sins. Because of the generosity of his favor, which he lavished upon us in every kind of wisdom and understanding. Making known to us the mystery of his will, his plan of his purpose. In accordance with the good pleasure which he previously purposed and set forth in him. He planned for the maturity of the times and the climax of the ages to unify all things and head them up and consummate them in Christ, both things in heaven and things on earth. In him also we were made God's heritage or God's portion. We obtain an inheritance for we've been foreordained uh, in accordance with his purpose who works out everything in agreement with the counsel and the design of his own will. So that we who first hoped in Christ, who put our confidence in him, have been destined and appointed to live to the praise of his glory. Okay, verse 13. In whom you also, who have heard the word of truth, the glad tidings of your salvation, and have believed in and relied on him, are stemmed with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. Come on, say the seal. Of the promised Holy Spirit. He says, when you heard the word of truth, when you heard the gospel of your salvation and you believed it and you relied on him, you were stamped with a seal of the promised Holy Spirit. Because I'm going to talk about that. Verse 14. The Spirit or the Holy Spirit is the guarantee of our inheritance. The first fruits, the pledge, the foretaste, the down payment on our heritage. Let's try that again. The Spirit is the guarantee of our inheritance. The Holy Ghost in you is a guarantee. He is the first fruits. He is the pledge. He is the foretaste. You know, in many countries, 
uh, in particular uh, in restaurants that are a little higher than the normal level. Uh, you know, one year when we're doing our, I don't know what if anniversary that was with my wife, maybe 30th or so anniversary, you know. We've had many anniversaries now. We're about to get to our 40th. Say amen. Is it this year? She knows all the dates. You know, it's amazing when we talk about our children. And I say, he says, plus me, how old is he? I say, 27. I say, no, he's not 27. He's 28. She, she gets it right. I don't know how these women get it, but they get them right. Anyway, we went to uh, what is known as a Michelin star restaurant. Uh, that is the, the top-ranked restaurants in the world. And uh, when you get there, and they tell you, we are going to take you there. They give you a lecture. They tell you, we are going to take you through a seven-course meal. Now, the first ones are, are what they call appetizers, you know, the starters to prepare your, your, your glands, you know, you to prepare you to when, when the real meal comes. They're never, they're never very big. Hey, but the taste. Oh, you're fasting, okay. Somebody hear someone say, Bishop, don't talk about food today. Do that on Monday. <laughs> but you know, this is what I'm trying to talk to you. It says the Holy Spirit is a foretaste of what is to come. The Holy Spirit is a foretaste. I come on, I don't know about your experience, but for me, I can never forget. I always tell this testimony. You know, I was one of those late bloomers. When it comes to the Holy Ghost, others were getting filled with the Holy Ghost first time. Me, it took me a little longer. I was always seeking. I, I didn't have too much understanding. Hey, but one day I was dead. My faith reached out to God. And I was filled with the Holy Ghost. And uh, oh, it was exciting. It was powerful. I was praying in tongues. And church finished too early. But you know, when we got into the bus, you know, the soup of those days, in Harare, they used to be called something, you know. Uh, I, I went to sit at the back because I wanted uh, to continue. I didn't want the Holy Ghost to go away. So I went at the back of the bus was evening, so there were not many people. And I was there under the chair going, He's still here. <laughs> Don't laugh at my ignorance, but I enjoyed it. I had a foretaste. Shout and say hallelujah. Hey, and I knew my life will never be the same again. It's a down payment on our heritage. It tells you the things that are coming are bigger. It says it's in anticipation of full redemption. And acquiring complete possession. This fast is a foretaste. A down payment. There's going to be a full redemption as the year pro progresses. Uh, can I hear an amen? amen? But it says the guarantee is the person of the Holy Ghost. Shout and say hallelujah. You know, today I want to talk about, like I said to you, possessing your Hebron. When God designed you and me and brought you into the world, each of you in here, no matter what you think about yourself, no matter what people have said about you, I want you to know you came uniquely equipped by God to accomplish a certain journey, certain things uh, that can only be accomplished by you. To sing your own song. A unique anointing. Amazing skills. Amazing gifts. That spark given by God. And only you can use that gift to make a difference. Say hallelujah. It is the spirit of God. Who has given each of us a special way in which we can serve God. And also serve one another. It's important for you to understand who you are and what God wants you to become. 
When you find yourself uh, through his word and through his calling uh, and coming to a place where your skills uh, and the call of God uh, come together, you know, you know what? Something is happening. Shout and say hallelujah. And uh, it's the same story we read here. Each of the tribes, uh, Moses came to a place, sorry, Joshua came to a place, I said to them, listen, here is the land, we have possessed it, we, we have conquered it, but now choose your territory. Judah says, I want this one, this large one. I'm a big tribe. Joseph says, I want the mountains. Uh, God says, I want the coastal places. As we enter 2022, what land are you possessing? Hebron, uh, Caleb says, give me Hebron. May I tell you, when this fast is over, even before it is over, actually tonight, go and sit down and write your goals for the year. Go and write down what things you're going to possess. It's a waste of time for you just to come in here and you're just generally to say, ah, we will see what will happen as the year goes along. No. Say hallelujah. What territory are you moving into? If you're a pastor, what kind of church are you raising this year? Say hallelujah. What areas are you penetrating this year? If you're a business person, come on, how much are you going to be getting? What is going to be your turnover? What markets are you going to be reaching? What new territories are you moving into? In the house of God, what role will you play to make a difference? So people, when they walk into church, they say, wow, we see someone's hand was here today. Men of honor, how are you going to make a difference? Too many of you have become lethargic. The devil has stolen from you the fire that used to be in you. Oh, but I bless you, it's being restored by the Holy Ghost. Jesus said, when he comes, he will convict. He will give you a sense of assurance and a sense of believing and of accepting the word which it comes. He will empower to serve God. He will transform your life to the image of Jesus Christ. Say hallelujah. People of God, wherever you are, as you listen to the voice of this preacher here today, it's not the cleverness of the preacher, but it's the working of the Holy Spirit. I don't know about some of you, but many people, they walk into church, maybe reluctantly, maybe not even wanting to come to church, but they've been forced, somebody has invited them, someone has pulled them, their mother, their uncle, their brother, they're preaching, and even when they're preaching, they're just uh, playing around with their phone, or wondering when church will get finished. Altar call comes. They feel something pulling them. Go to the front. You ask them, how did you come here? I don't know. Conviction. Say Hallelujah. Some of you have come to church saying, I don't want to embarrass myself. Me, I don't go to the front. Me, no. You don't know who you are dealing with right here. Because when he is in the house of God and the word of God is being preached, he's brooding upon the face of the deep. And when the word is spoken, let there be light. <laughs> that which is of God will respond. Please don't be proud that you don't obey the word of God. Or oh, open yourself, humble yourself to the word of God. That when it comes, it comes with conviction. 
and allow God to transform you. You know what will be the point of sitting for six, seven days in the house of God, hearing a preacher labor and sweat out, and you go home and things remain exactly the same. You have already given devil the victory. But allow God to touch you. But also allow God to empower you. Come on, say be empowered. Say be empowered. Oh yeah, there will be challenges, but there will be many victories in 2022. When you are empowered by God, it will not be by might, nor by, by powered by, by the spirit of the living God. The reason we are releasing an anointing over your life uh, is so that uh, when you're out there, you are supernaturally empowered to do amazing things. You look back and say, how did that happen? How did I preach? How did I achieve this business? How did I give so much? How did I, I lead these men and now there's 50 of them? How did I lead these women and now there's 100 of them? How did I lead these children to salvation? And now they are serving the Lord. You were empowered. Say hallelujah. See, we make a mistake. Many of us think, well, you know what? Ah, me, I'm very powerful. I can heal the sick. No one can heal the sick, but the Holy Ghost can heal the sick. Say hallelujah. When you are empowered, you can just touch with your finger and they get healed. You can just preach the word of God and they get healed. Listen to the word of God. But you have to allow him to empower you. Shout and say Amen. And this is what we desire you. And so when Joshua uh, had conquered the kings and their enemies, uh, neutralized their power, uh, he was now saying, now each of you tribes, uh, get your distinct territory. Get your assignment and accomplish it. By the way, do you know that the word Joshua and Jesus are almost the same? Hello? When our Lord Jesus at Calvary had defeated the devil, made a public triumph over him, rose again from the dead, he came to the church and said, listen, now go and take your territory. Your enemy is defeated. Say hallelujah. He says, church, here is the great commission. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. The enemy is defeated. Kingdom financiers, the enemy of poverty is defeated. Go in and take the wealth of the nations and bring it into the house of God. The enemy is defeated. Say hallelujah. Carry a healing anointing. Uh, when you lay your hands in the name of Jesus, the sick will be healed. The enemy is defeated. Come on, your marriages will blossom. They will flourish. Because the kill of marriages is defeated. Come on, the barren wombs will open up uh, and they'll carry children because the one who was closing wombs is defeated. Come on, someone say amen to that. Shout hallelujah. Young people, don't listen to the, what the world is saying. They are not your role models. Jesus is your role model. Be excited to become a young person who is fired up for Jesus. But you know, here's what matters. Shout and say hallelujah. Ah, uh, You see, you cannot do a decision. You cannot move into the future without the guidance, the leadership, and the power of the person of the Holy Spirit. The challenge you have had is that many of us, uh, yes, he chose us, he adopted us, he regenerated us, uh, but many of us, that was where it ended when we got born again. We have not continued relating to him. We have not continued consulting him on our journey of life. Uh, but today I'm calling the church back again. Let's walk with the Holy Spirit. See, when you listen uh, to the words of Jesus, uh, shout and say hallelujah. Uh, you hear him clearly telling us uh, a number of things. Uh, he says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God. These ones are the sons of God. Not as many as come to church, but as many as are led. 
Not the good people in church, but as many as are led by the Spirit of God. See, in the old covenant, the Holy Spirit was guiding Israel every day by pillar of fire by night. By day, they would see the cloudy pillar. Say hallelujah. Uh, in, the new, in the New Testament, the Holy Spirit was guiding uh, the New Testament church. Let me tell you, FCC, no matter how clever we may be, we must be guided by the Holy Spirit. Say amen. Say amen. It's important that we be very clear about who we are. You know, I, I read this in, in Acts 16, verse 6 to 9. Paul and Silas, uh, passing through the region of Galatia and Phrygia, uh, he says, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to proclaim the word of God in Asia. They'd planned it nicely. We're going to have a crusade in Asia, in this place, and uh, in that place. Uh, and when they were about to set off, uh, the Holy Ghost said, no. Who? Oh. And when he said no, uh, remember that the Holy Spirit doesn't always speak to everybody the same thing. He didn't go to Asia and tell the people in Asia no. And I'm sure they said, Paul, we are waiting for you. Where are you? He said, no, I can't come. God says no. Ah, but we've wasted money with printed posters. He says, but I have to obey the voice of the Holy Spirit. He said, Hallelujah. And then they tried to go to Bithynia, and the Spirit of Jesus did not permit them. Then one night, in a vision, a man from Macedonia stood with him and said, come over to Macedonia. That's how the gospel got into Europe. Oh yeah, later on, the gospel went to Asia. Ephesus was in Asia. Colossae was in Asia. But it was, at that time, it was not the right time. You see, one of the things you have to learn, children of God, shout and say hallelujah. The Holy Spirit knows the times and the seasons. Don't do the right thing at the wrong time. How I wish many more of our leaders would be able to pray prayers like Holy Spirit, lead us and guide us. Don't do a crusade in Mzilikaz when it's time to do a crusade in Magogobo. And don't do a crusade when it's time to go door to door witnessing. And don't buy a suit when that money is for the house of God. Say hallelujah. And don't plan a wedding when it's time for fasting. <laughs> know the times who will sustain your wedding in him all things hold together it's not your cleverness I want you to know the rice and the salad that your wedding can't hold your marriage together oh but when you honor Jesus say hallelujah when you discover it's a season of prayer and fasting, say, wait a minute, the wedding can wait. Yeah. It is easy. It will be there in November and December. Hello? <laughs> Come on, say times. Say seasons. See, those he speaks to, those who are saved, those who walk in righteousness, those who are concerned about the master's business, those who are focused on doing the will of God, will always hear the voice of God. But if you're always resisting, always disobeying, always saying, ah, no, man, ah, I'm busy, man, I can't go to church to clean up the church. Ah, no, I can't take this money and give it. Ah, no, I can't pray for the church right now, I'm too busy. Sooner or later, that voice will become fainter and faint here. Say amen. I think I have to do this right now. Come on, Esther, just come here. Just come, just come. 
Stretch your hand towards this couple here. Just, just raise your hands to God. Sita Mahaika Sharamai. Sila just somebody ask for me, please help me. Siri Kama Koshomondo Ramahayanda. Holy Spirit. I pray for this couple right now. Lord, your hand and your blessing. Because of the obedience. Father, because they listen to the voice of God, touch their lives. Father, do more for them than they can ask or think or imagine. In the name of Jesus. Go ahead and give God a big hand clap. I said it's important that you have a desire to say yes to what God has revealed to you. That there be a longing on the inside of you to say the master's business matters. Did you hear the words of Jesus 12 years when his mother came looking for him? Son, we're looking for you. Where have you been? He says, don't you know that I must be about my father's business? My priority is my father's business. My priority is the house of God. There are things to be done. If there are things to be attended to, hey, it, it takes my time. It takes my resources. And I can assure you, when you cooperate with God like that, he'll carry you so far, you have no idea how much. There must be willingness to do the will of God. Say hallelujah. If God says no to something, you know it's a no. Don't keep on arguing with God. See, listen, the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God because they are spiritually discerned. But you know, when you listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit, what makes them foolish sometimes, but learn to say yes to God. Of course, every leading by the Holy Spirit, every revelation by the Holy Spirit will always line up with the word of the living God. He says, my sheep hear my voice. And they will know how to come in and how to go out. They will know when he speaks and they will respond appropriately. Jesus said to us, I will ask the Father. <laughs> he will give you another one like me. He will be called the counselor. Come on, say counselor. Say helper. Say intercessor. Say advocate. Say strengthener. Say, and he will remain with you forever. He is a person. He has an intellect. I know we get confused because we seem like the wind, like the dove, like the fire, uh, and we think he's a thing. No, he is a person. He is a third member, the executor of the plan and the purposes of God, uh, a third member of the Holy Trinity. Because our God is a triune God, but he's one God. He, O oh Israel, the Lord thy God, he is one. Come and raise your hands. Say, Holy Spirit, uh, how I love you. How I welcome you. Uh, you are my comforter. Uh, you are my helper. Uh, you are my counselor. You are my intercessor. You are my advocate. You are my strengthener. You are the spirit of truth. He says the world cannot receive him. The world cannot welcome him into their hearts because they do not see him. They do not know him. They do not recognize him. They do not see him. They do not know him. They do not recognize him. But you know him. Can I tell you something? If every one of you members who are listening to me in this church walked and lived by the revelation of this truth, our church will become a revolutionary church. Are you listening to me? Huh. The prayers which will be prayed. 
the witnessing that will take place, the giving from these members, the tithing from each one of you, this will become a revolutionary church. But many of us, we are like we are on the edge. She don't go there, church. Lilunguz. Let's see. I I know I'm not in the figure lab. Ah, let me go and try. Let me just go and get, get a blessing and go away. But that's not what God says. He says, I, I, I'm going to not leave you alone. I'm giving you another one just like me. Develop a relationship with him. Say hallelujah. He says, he will live with you constantly. He will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans, comfortless, desolate, bereaved, forlorn, helpless. Uh-uh. No, that's not what he says. He says, but the comforter, ah, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name and in my place to represent me and to act on my behalf. Just like you love Jesus, just like you walk with Jesus, just like you know him, the Holy Spirit represents Jesus in every area. No man should go on a pulpit or on a platform or on an instrument or on an usher without saying, Holy Spirit, come and help me. Holy Spirit, anoint me as a channel uh, that what will flow through me to your people will be because it's coming from your power. We don't want your cleverness here. And don't come to show off. Girls, did you see me today? Ah, pela ben chai vogun zimalapan. Hey, ben ni chai piano. Liwa zile masa unza ngona zo. That's not what it is. Say hallelujah. No preacher should open his Bible and just go there uh, to rattle off some something. So that at the end of the day, well, let's give an offering and now we're in church. Ah, uh-uh. ah. Holy Spirit, what do you want to do? What word do you want to bring to your people? Say hallelujah. That's our cry. Can we raise our hands? Even in your business, learn to invite the Holy Spirit as you make decisions. Ah, he is there to help you. He is there to work in your life. Cry to the Lord and say, Holy Spirit, we cannot do without you. It is you we need ah, more than anyone else. It is you we cry for. It is your guidance. Ah, it is your voice, your, your intercession, ah, your counseling in my business, in my marriage, in the house of God as I preach, as I sing, as I usher, as I stand on a camera, my God, as I stand as a deacon, as I count the offering, whatever I do, Holy Spirit, I want to know it's you uh, that guides me, and I want to know it is Jesus helping me. Say hallelujah. He says he will teach you all things, and he will cause you to recall, to bring to mind, to remembrance everything I have taught you. Shout and say Hallelujah. And so we, we now read our story, uh, again, which uh, in the book of Joshua. You see, Caleb, when he's going before Joshua and says, hey, by the way, Joshua, I'm not just doing this because I'm a clever person, but remember that day when we stood before the Lord in Gilgal, uh, the word which the Lord said to Moses, the man of God concerning you. You see, your future is Tied to the word of God. Oh God. Your prosperity comes out of the word of God. Your growth, your increase comes out of the word of God. What word? God, you said, put on your beautiful garments. God, you said, put off the unclean garments. Put on the beautiful garments. Awake and arise. You'll show your mighty power, your hand, and your blessing. He said, how beautiful on the mountains. Ah, uh, give me this mountain. When he said, give me Hebron, he knew my heritage is in Hebron. I have a question for you today. What is your Hebron? 
Or perhaps, <laughs> shout and say hallelujah. Uh, I should go a little back, say amen. See, for Josh, for, 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 uh, for Caleb, he wasn't just asking because it looked nice. But he could remember the glory of God that came down. He had heard the stories. How his father in the faith, his grandpa uh, of many years, uh, had walked with this Jehovah, Yahweh, uh, Jehovah Jireh. And, uh, and he says, you know what? When I look at Hebron, I see my inheritance. Come on. Relationship with God is my inheritance. Anointing is my inheritance. And it is tied with this mountain called Hebron. When he said, give me Hebron, he was saying, I will take care of Hebron. Because from Hebron comes the blessing of Abraham to generations. When you take care of the house of God, your children's children will be blessed. That's true. Come on, when you honor the things of Hebron, let me tell you, the anointing of God will multiply. When you trash the house of God, you are trashing your own future. When you walk into church and don't give an offering, you are impoverishing your own future. When you don't pray for the house of God, you are destroying your own future. I bless you tonight. May God open your eyes and see your Hebron. See, listen, when Caleb was looking at Hebron, it didn't look pretty anymore. The heathens were there. They trashed everything. Their cattle were moving all over the graves and all over the altars that Abraham had set up. I put it to you. Caleb wanted to do something great for God. He wasn't asking so that he can become a millionaire. No, he was asking so that he can do something great for God. He wasn't asking for Hebron so that one day, you know, he can sell it. He was asking so that he can do something awesome for his God. Say hallelujah. <laughs> do you want to do something great for God in 2022? Is there a desire in your heart? Is there a prayer in your life? Is there zeal? He lived 45 years with a higher call. Every day, he never forgot it. When the promise was given to him by the Lord, when the Lord said uh, to him through Moses, because you have wholly followed the Lord, say hallelujah. Because you have shown a different spirit, uh, when the, you tread upon that land, it will be yours. He says, you know what? This call has always been upon my life. I'm glad I've done some wars. I'm glad I've done a few things in life, but it's not enough. It's not enough. I'm now 85, but I'm not giving up on myself. It's not too late. I'm strong. <laughs> Come on, I bless you with the strength, children of God. I mean, how can you be weak when you're 19 years? Come on, could not look at the church in 24 years. Kopojo is a tattoo. Ah, my God. Please don't behave like Chambiri. Quit as stingy. Only 21 years. Mbondo kai chinchwa. Here was a man in whose heart there was a cry for I have a higher call. I can't lose my strength. I'm not, I've not achieved the things God wants me to achieve. I'm strong today for this call of God. <laughs> I bless you with the strength. 
Every young person should be in the church half past seven. Let the mothers with the babies come at eight o'clock. At least they can say, I was bathing this one, then I had to feed this one, then I had to clothe this one. Now, watch your foot. At least, at least. I mean, you sleep alone. You wake up alone. And you can't arrive in church early. Are you saved? Are you saved? Do you have the Holy Ghost burning in you? Did, did you receive the same Holy Ghost? Don't even let me talk about the fast. Because some of you from the day you heard about the fast, Makato Feinta. We shall not even say you're not fasting. Hello? <laughs> Glory to God. Come on, I said, today possess your Hebron. Mothers of the house of God. Why should the house of God look barren when you are there? Fathers in the house of God. We are not seeing you. We are not feeling you. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are not feeling your creativity. We are not feeling your energy. You know, I heard a little story. One man he says, I was sleeping in the street. I had no home. I didn't have any job or you know, anything. So at night, he would get into a late night train. You know those trains in the in the in the in the developed cities they travel around the city, you know. Like say if there was a train in Blaway underground, it would move from Selborne Park to Hillside to Queen's Park uh, to uh, Mahachula to Te whatever, you know, Cowdray Park, uh, come back again, go around. So he would get into the late night train and sleep there. Then one day when he was there getting ready to sleep in the train. Another street person also walked in and sat opposite. He looked at him for a long time. He says, we used to fight for places, we used to fight a lot with the other street people. He says, but this day, this, this man was different. He was a street person. He looked at him and said to him, you, you don't belong here. He says, why? He says, no, 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 I can see it in your eyes. You don't belong here. He says, what, 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 do you want, what do you want to do? What do you want to become? He says, why do you say I don't belong here? He says, I can see it in your eyes. People who belong here have given up on life and they die early. They've surrendered. But I can see it in your eyes. You don't belong here. There's still a flicker of a dream. I came to tell someone in here today, you don't belong to the street sleepers. No. Come on, you are a child of God. Come on, let your eyes begin to dream again. Let the strength of God rise out of you again. Come on, you don't belong to those who have given up. <laughs> You don't belong to those who are simply accompanying others to church. It's time to take your place. It's time to use your strength and your creativity. It's time to know you have a higher call upon your life. It's time to do something that will impact your world for eternity. The question is, how high is your call? Say hallelujah. Maybe the reason your problems feel so great is because your cause is too small. David said, is there not a cause? See, when you focus on problems, you have no cause. 
People with no cause, they don't focus on their problems. They focus on their cause. A few of you in here, or some of you who have had relatives, you remember during the time of the Liberation War, when those guys came into the village, they didn't show like that. They, they didn't come in to tell you how much they suffered and struggled. And, no! They appeared like, I tell you, we are guys, we are in control. Even if they ate all your chickens. But to them, what mattered was their cause. And they would be dancing all night because they, what focus, they focused on was their cause. Say Hallelujah. It's important that you set your mind on a holy kingdom cause. That's when you'll need the Holy Spirit. Because some of you, because there's nothing you're waiting for, nothing impossible you're attending, no supernatural thing you need, you never need the person of the Holy Spirit. But here is the bishop coming to say, whether you're online listening to me in England, uh, in Botswana, in South Africa, in uh, Dubai, wherever you are, in Harare, in Mashingo, in Mutare, listen to the bishop tonight. Uh, possess your Hebron. Say hallelujah. Yes. It is worth fighting for. Hear from the Holy Spirit. You know, one time, uh, people came from the house of Cornelius to Simon Peter. He was fasting like you here. And just before they arrived, uh, the Holy Spirit told him, Peter, there are people coming to you see you. And when they see you and invite you, don't say no. Go with them. People asked him, why did you go to the Gentiles? His answer was simple. The Spirit bade me go. Ah. The Spirit bade me go. Come on, I bless you, worship team. May the Spirit bid you go. Come on, I bless you, preachers. May the Spirit of the Lord bid you go. I bless you, mothers in the house of God. May the Spirit bid you go. I bless you, fathers in the house of God. Have a relationship with God. Say, the Spirit bid me go. We will see amazing things. Who will stop you when you tell them the spirit made me go? Nobody. Even your own self. Say hallelujah. Ask God to give you a Hebron. You can claim for his glory. In 2022. Say amen. Uh, in the kingdom of God we gain by giving, not by taking. We grow by helping others, not hurting them. We advance by serving, not demanding. I'm finished. Stand on your feet. Shout and say hallelujah. Shout and say amen. Oh, I don't have a watch today. Say hallelujah. We're going to raise our hands and talk to God. And it's three minutes to six. But I want you to pray to God. A very demanding prayer. Tell God I'm strong for war today. What the enemy has stolen. Our inheritance that our Lord Jesus gave to us. We are taking it by force. Not by might, not by power, but by your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, anoint me in a fresh way for war. Give me this Hebron. <laughs> Say hallelujah. Oh, give me this mountain. I don't care how many giants are there. I'm going to fight and this mountain becomes our inheritance. Until our children can say, our fathers left us an inheritance of amazing worship, amazing preaching, amazing churches, amazing glorious moves of God, amazing faith in God. Say hallelujah. 
Pastor, some of the Hebron will be a thousand people's souls born again. Children of God, some of those Hebrons will be what you do. Oh, glorious things that will make a difference in the kingdom of God, in the house of God. Can we raise our hands right now wherever we are? Come on, I want you to declare today that my Father God, I will never be intimidated uh, by situations, uh, by negativity, and I'll never allow anything to steal my faith and operate uh, out of fear anymore. But I want to be able to say, the Lord said, ah, Father, because of this season of prayer and fasting, oh my God, this is my Hebron, ah, a cause that is higher than myself, a cause that is greater, ah, my Father God, than the flesh. I pray in the name of Jesus, Father God, for the visitation of the Spirit of the Lord. I put my mind, oh God, ah, Father, to do something great, Father, for the Lord. Ah, beginning out of my spirit. Ah, Peter said, the spirit bade me go. Father Apostle Paul, in the early church, they were able to say, ah, we're hindered from going to Asia by the spirit. Oh, but we had ah, the vision of the men from Macedonia saying, come over and help us. Lord, we are listening, oh God, ah, to your visitation, ah, to your guidance. Ah, Lord God, to the wisdom of God, we have given us the seal, the foretaste of the things you want to do through us and for us. And oh God, we pray, Father, as FCC, give us this Hebron, ah, the nations, ah, the churches, my Father God, a life changing move of the Spirit of God and revival and churches. Glorious in holiness. We pray, Father God, that we'll experience oh, amazing oh, miracles in the house of God. Ah, amazing salvation. Transformation of lives. Empower your servants tonight, oh God. Oh, transform your people tonight, oh God. Oh, let the word preach with conviction in every place where we are. We thank you. We worship you and we honor you. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name, say hallelujah. You know, one of the key things about that is that my Bible says Caleb had a different spirit. Out of the twelve, two stood by the word of God. The majority were wrong, the two were right. Are you willing to stand alone for what is right? See, be careful of wanting to hide in the crowd. The crowd <laughs> do not always listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Say amen. Be, be careful about the, the voices you hear about problems, about uh, uh, issues and so forth and fears. Listen, you don't have to absorb it. Because the enemy uses those negativity to destroy people. Until you are a pale shadow of who you used to be. Raise the finger of God right now. I want to challenge every voice of fear, every voice of intimidation. I want to challenge every voice uh, that tells you, do not serve God, do not run the race, do not have a vision. Uh, declare, I am a man with a different spirit. I am a woman with a different spirit. Yes, and I silence the voice of the enemy. I silence all oh, demonic spirits. I silence uh, every voice of the accuser. I silence every Everything that seeks uh, uh, to magnify the problems, uh, I silence. Uh, uh, everything uh, that is pessimistic, uh, the naysayers, the doubters, uh, in Jesus' mighty name. Uh, Heavenly Father, I refuse, oh God, uh, uh, the disbelief of cynics. Uh, I refuse, oh God, uh, those who want to wander in the wilderness. Uh, those who want, oh God, who reject growth, uh, who want to pull me down. I don't allow them, uh, Heavenly Father, I fill my mind with the faith of God. Come on, fill your mind with the faith of God. Oh, welcome the person of the Holy Spirit. Oh, welcome the guidance, the leadership, ah, the seal of the Holy Spirit. Ah, declare from today, Holy Spirit, you and I will have amazing adventures. Ah, welcome the prophetic word, the word of knowledge. Welcome, oh, the anointing that comes ah, from the Holy Spirit into your life today. Oh, Rikama, just pray in the Holy Ghost. Hai, Kama. Kiyama, Kosho, Mondo, Romotia. 
Ale kama handaria masinde mo kotia. Are leke mo mo shimunda rama katai. Are ya mashelele mo rama haya. Kata maha katimu rama ndama kakati emu. Raha mashama lama katai. Erie mo rama haya katai. Ele mo rama kasiya. Tell God anoint me for great things. 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 I'm tired of doing ordinary things. I'm tired of doing little things. I'm tired of doing things uh, that have no impact. I'm tired of, oh my God, being just a follower of others. Uh, when I'm made unique, I want my skills and my giftings and the call of God uh, to make a difference in every place where I am. Lord, this is a season of a new beginning ari kama mama mama shaya ali kama rama hayanda makatai imura mahaya hai kama andara matai shimura mahandai listen children of god i'm going to just minister right now uh, some of you pastors won't be here tomorrow if you can, please do come. But some of you servants of God can make, won't be able to make it because your time where church starts maybe starts a little early. But if you can make time between 8 and uh, 10 o'clock to be here and then go to your church later, that will be brilliant. Come and be here with the bishop. Say amen. Sometimes you end up getting into a dryness, getting into a season where things look so difficult and there's no progress because you are never ministered to. Say Amen. Because you need to be in a place where you can drink from this well. Say hallelujah. And then you can be able to give out and be able to be a blessing. Uh, and so if you can be here, be here. And then you can go to your church. But obviously if you cannot be, maybe because you're just early, we understand. I will minister to you right now. As well as some of you church members as well. If you are here and you can't be here tomorrow. And you say, Bishop, I've come. Please minister to me. Uh, release this anointing. You know, Caleb was able to say, you remember the word that the man of God spoke to me, Moses. I was 40 years younger. Now I'm 85 years old. Oh, but I've held on to that word. Do you know that word kept him? The word of the promise kept him. He would wake up every morning looking forward. I'm going to get that Hebron. Say hallelujah. He would fight every battle knowing I'm going to go one day and attack a bronze and bring it back into the house of God. It will, it will again belong to the people of God. And when you have a cause to fight for, you will not die early. Say hallelujah. And if you are here right now and you want me to put this anointing upon your life... Ah, uh, and they just, uh, as, as you are listening to, to the bishop, uh, you know, I just feel that this uh, Hebron, this uh, uh, Caleb anointing must come upon your life uh, in a very special way tonight. Uh, and also if you prepared your seed, if you didn't, that's okay. You can bring it tomorrow, bring it to office during the week, uh, whenever you get ready. But I want you to just come to the front right now uh, and uh, stand here and I'll pray for you. Uh, and I'll ask our worship team to be singing with us. Uh, as we get ready to receive uh, that uh, anointing upon our lives. Let's do that right now. For those who are coming for prayer, please come quickly. Uh, but if you're coming tomorrow, that's okay. We, we thank God for you to do that uh, in the name of Jesus. Consecration Oh, consecration, oh, consecration, will pave the way, oh, consecration, 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 oh, consecration, 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 will pave the way. All consecration, man. All consecration. All consecration. Consecration will pave the way. All give in touch. All give in touch with the heavens. With the heavens every day.
right now everybody can just come and bring it right now or elders will stand in every place keep place here as we sing and worship with the singers oh consecration raise your hands as I pray for you before we dismiss. Father, I thank you for the Caleb anointing. And I thank you for the person of the Holy Spirit. Father, that you will speak loud and clear to your people. He will give wisdom. Father, they will know in their inner man the voice of the living God. They will make the right decisions. And above all, Heavenly Father, as they said, yes to higher cause. Yes to that which is of eternity. Let the blessing and let the partnership between you and your people thrive in 2022. We release your glory upon your people. And we thank you for victory as they take over their Hebrons in every place where they are. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you for the anointing of strength. Thank you for the anointing of beautiful garments. Thank you that Zion is awake to the workings of God. Thank you that Zion is alive to the moves of the Holy Spirit. Bless every servant of God. Bless every worship team. Bless everyone who serves in the house of God and everyone whose hearts God has touched tonight. 
Let this be a year with a difference in Jesus' mighty name. Let's say the benediction. Say the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God our Father. The fellowship of His Holy Spirit. Be with us all. Now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Tell him about possess your Hebrons. Hallelujah. God bless you. So we'll sing with the singers tomorrow morning, by the way. Uh, those who are coming into the city service, 8 o'clock, our service is starting. Say amen. I think it's being started quarter at 8. If you come at 8, the place, there may be no chase, especially tomorrow. Mm, because everyone wants to break early. And once the church is full, we lock you out. So don't be locked out. So as we sing, God bless you, you are dismissed. Ma basa e tiwa ya tama o iko tingori nyacha pamsoro pe.